everyone and welcome to the STEM School Label High Level Event. My name is Noel Billon and I'm coordinating Youth and School Net activities in the STEM School Label project. Together with us today in the online room, we have my colleague Thomas Yuskiv, who will be supporting this event from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send him a message in the question and answer window. But most importantly, it is with great pleasure that I will soon be welcoming our speakers for today, who are teachers, heads of schools, researchers, but also representatives of STEM organizations and ministries from different countries in Europe. They all agreed to share with you their experience or research findings about the different aspects and criteria defining a STEM school. Thank you so much to them for being here and presenting today. Now let me continue with some technical aspects. The live event is recorded and we will publish the link to the recording on the STEM School Label platform as well as on Scientix and STEM Alliance portals. To get a greater experience out of this online event, you can use live captions and subtitles in English. To activate this, you just need to go to your video controls and select caption subtitles as you can see on the slide. You will also see a question and answer window in your screen. If you don't see it, make sure to open it because we will be sharing useful information and links with you there throughout the event. Also, as this is an interactive event, please feel free to share your questions to the speakers in this window. We will be collecting them and address them to the speakers towards the end of each presentation and during the open discussion at the end of the live event today. The STEM school label is financed by the Erasmus Plus program. For the event to be considered eligible, we must provide to the European Commission the full name and address of all participants. For this, I kindly ask you to go to the Padlet for the event through the link that is shown in the question and answer panel and provide your schools or organizations full address. We will need the street, number, postal code, city and country and your full name, name and surname, as you provided when you registered to the event. As you might know, European Schoolnet is coordinating STEM school label. European Schoolnet is a network of 34 ministries of education in Europe based in Brussels, which aims to bring innovation in teaching and learning to key stakeholders who are ministries of education, schools, teachers, researchers and industry partners. STEM is one of European Schoolnet's major thematic domains. I will now give the floor to Mark Durando, the executive director of European Schoolnet, so he can tell you how the STEM school label is of strategic importance for Europe, education, and our ministries of education. Mark, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Noel. Well, welcome to, to all of you. And uh, before I, I, I intervene on, on sharing with you some STEM education challenges, uh, I would like to, to thank our, our STEM team at the level of the European School Net. As you know, um, we, we are living an exceptional period. We had to convert all our foreseen physical events into online events, and I really hope that we will succeed with, with you during these two days for making this event as much interactive as possible and also giving you the possibility to profit from the results of the STEM school label and discuss on potential future strategies. So today, uh, I, 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 I will ensure you I will not be too long as um, we there are so many topics on the agenda. I, will, uh, I would like to share with you a certain number of uh, uh, challenges in STEM education and uh, more importantly uh, there are three challenges that I would like to to share with you. I'm not sure the, the, the slide goes even if there is small okay. delay at the level of the presentation. Uh, yes, uh, the first is importance of STEM skills with, with regard to future career paths. 
and how crucial it is to prepare students, teachers and schools. Um, our, the second item is related to how to make STEM studies more attractive to students. And I will finish certainly by the importance to support the STEM school strategies. Looking at uh, the first item, uh, digital transition is certainly one of the major issue we have to face in our current society. We 80% of our technology which will be used uh, in 10 years are not yet invented, but we know that they will have to be implemented by 80% of people which are already in activity. And on the other side, the research tell us that 50% of the current jobs worldwide, around 30% in Europe, will disappear in 25 years. But at the same time, nine out of 10 jobs will require digital skills. And another piece of research tell us that 44% of the EU population aged be between 16 and 74 lack basic digital skills. And the main question is whether we are going to face a new social divide regarding the digital literacy and the digital skills. And in that context, it is quite essential that education institutions can prepare students and teachers for this transition. However, uh, I'm not sure we can limit a digital transition only to the concept of digital skills. It has to be described in a much broader context related to the issue of STEM skills. And the situation regarding STEM in schools uh, can be identified generally around three major items. The first one is a curricula, and we all know that the curricula is overstuffed with factual content. More and more topics are added, while very few are removed, which makes the life of a STEM teacher quite complicated. Pedagogy also is one of the major challenges. We are still too much on the text-based factual record approach, whereas we should promote more exploratory learning modes, such as inquiry-based science education. And finally, one of the major questions is, what is the relevance for, of content to the pupils' lives and future careers? And generally, pupils fail to see how STEM relates to society's current challenges. So, in order to make STEM studies more attractive, at the level of European School Net and our ministries of education, we have identified three key, key interrelated factors. First, the necessity to have motivated and recognized teachers, the importance to develop innovative pedagogies and creative curriculum, and the role and engagement of industry, which has to be more present and more regular in all STEM activities. But there is a fourth factor which uh, on which we have worked for uh, the last three years and it concerns the importance to support a STEM school strategy globally. It is essential that we can guide European schools in increasing young Europeans' interest in, in skills in STEM subjects to provide the schools with the necessary tools to engage the students, teachers and other actors in related activities by developing an appropriate STEM strategy. And finally, to offer an ecosystem for the schools where they assess their situation, develop and advance their whole school strategy. And that's how the STEM school label project has been uh, launched uh, three years ago. And we arrive at the end of this project and we will be pleased during these two days to share with you the outcomes and the importance of focusing of the development of a STEM school strategy at the level of the, of the organization. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you, Mark. UN have been involved in more than 30 STEM education initiatives, tackling the issues and challenges that you just mentioned, and financed through European school net members, industry partners, or by European Union's funding program. As part of these initiatives, two are actually co-organized co-organizing this event today. 
Scientix, the community for science education in Europe, and the STEM Alliance. But where did the idea of STEM school label come from? STEM school label was initiated following the discussions with our working group with ministries of education representatives under Scientix, which stressed the importance to support schools in working together and develop a STEM school strategy. STEM education is also about career path and preparing students and teachers for the skills that will be necessary for the future jobs. In this sense, STEM Alliance bring together industries, ministries of education and education stakeholders to promote science, technology, engineering and math education and careers to young Europeans and address anticipated future skills gaps within the European Union. STEM Alliance has 17 companies which are working together in order to enhance the collaboration between the industries and the education sector. To develop this project, we joined forces with four other organizations specialized in STEM education from Lithuania, Portugal, Serbia and France. But STEM School Able can also count on its associate partners. There are organizations interested in STEM education that included the STEM School Label framework within their activities, and they also help us promoting the initiatives to schools in different countries of Europe and beyond. Going back to the initiative itself, our objective with this project were clear, to give recognition to schools at the national and European level for the activities schools are doing or their efforts in improving these activities, but also to help schools developing their STEM strategy and thus become a STEM school. For this, the project developed an online, an online tool so the schools could self-assess themselves regarding the STEM strategy they are implementing at the school level and get the necessary guidance in order to improve it. To start with the initiative, we needed first to define a STEM school. What do we mean by STEM school and what are the criteria in order to become one? If we look at the literature, creating a common or even clear definition of a STEM school is still a complicated task as the existing research efforts on the issue often appear isolated. Besides, STEM focused schools are normally established in East Asian countries or in the United States and do not appear to be common in European countries. Only one European framework was found at the time when we started the project in the Flemish community of Belgium entitled STEM Framework for Flemish Schools, Principles and Objectives. STEM education has become a priority in European countries and strategies are being developed to improve teaching and learning and the uptake of studies and careers in STEM. So based on a literature review and on consultations with four groups of key stakeholders in STEM education, schools, STEM teachers, ministries of education and STEM industries, we worked on a publication which presents the results of an analysis developed to establish and validate the definition of a STEM school. Following this analysis, a STEM school is defined as a school with a clear STEM strategy, including 21 criteria divided into seven key elements. Let's have a closer look at each of these key elements. Regarding the key element instruction, here we have the criterion personalization of learning that refers to instructional approaches intended to address the different learning needs, interests or cultural backgrounds of students. We also have the, uh, the criterion problem and project based learning, which corresponds to a student centered pedagogy in which students learn about subjects by solving open ended problems and our projects either individually or collaboratively. And finally, inquiry based science education, which is a learning process in which questions, problems and scenarios are presented to students, including case studies, field work, investigation or research project. If you want to know more about IBSE, on 6th of July 2020, organized jointly with Scientix and STEM Alliance under the STEM Online Days, the Amgen Teach project will offer the online webinar IBSC at Home with interactive sessions and moments for sharing practices. 
The aim of the webinar is to deepen student interest and achievement in science by strengthening the ability of life science secondary school teachers to use IVAC teaching strategies in the classroom, face to face and at distance. Let's now look at the key element, professionalization of staff. For a STEM school, it is important to address the criterion highly qualified professionals, as teachers should be encouraged to expand their repertoire of skills as it is an essential feature of their lifelong learning journey. The requirements of individual teachers and educators might vary according to their roles or working context, but in any case, teachers need to be supported in the process of developing and enriching their STEM skills. Besides, support for pedagogical staff and professional development are also important in regards to this key element. In education, the term professional development is used in reference to a wide variety of specialized training, formal education or advanced professional learning intended to help administrators, teachers and other educators improve their professional knowledge, competence, skills and effectiveness. When we talk about professional development in STEM, Scientix, the Community for Science Education in Europe, provides a number of opportunities for professional development, online or face-to-face. -face. One example is the upcoming STEM is Everywhere online course that will start in September and is open to all teachers in the world. So stay tuned about the upcoming ones, just signing to their digest or newsletters. There is also how the school is connecting with others that is considered important for a STEM school. Connections with industry, with parents and guardians, with other schools and or educational platforms, but also with universities and our research centers, and finally also with local communities. You want to improve the connections with companies outside your school and get to know more about future professional career paths and corresponding studies, for, for example? Well, you can check out the activities of STEM Alliance, like webinars, online events, news on school industry activities or the upcoming policy hack competition. The question of the assessment is also an important aspect, which can be referred as continuous assessment or personalized assessment. On one hand, continuous assessment is an assessment typology where students are examined continuously. On the other hand, personalized assessment is an assessment typology framed to demonstrate whether pupils have met specific educational goals according to their personal development. You can find on the STEM school label portal nice examples from schools directly on how they address the assessment criteria in their classroom within the galleries of school practice evidence or case studies. The so whole school culture is also making a difference as the STEM school and school leadership is therefore considered as a key element. This includes a high level cooperation among staff and an inclusive culture. If you want to know more about how to address school leadership in your school strategy, the Learning Leadership for Change project aims to introduce a new perspective on the shared leadership approach in schools. In order to achieve this, it has published a resources page which will help teachers, school leaders and policymakers engage and encourage leadership capacity in their school community. The resources offer a wide range of materials, including videos, guidelines, courses, action plans, promotional materials, divided into three main sections, leadership videos, document and links, and promotional material. Access to technology and equipment also plays an important role, as well as instruction materials in the school strategy. But most importantly, this is not the level of equipment and infrastructure that we evaluate for a STEM school, but how it is used in the classroom and how it promotes creativity and innovation. We know that innovative te technology connects students with information systems, databases and research, mentors and social networking resources for ideas during and beyond the school day. 
the school structure and use of technology has the potential to change relationships between students, teachers and knowledge. When we talk about these criteria, it is important that students identify and use the tools they need to solve problems. In this sense, technology is used to engage students in community, national and global learning opportunities that extend beyond the classroom. To know more about how to use technology in the classroom, the Future Classroom Lab has inspired many teachers, schools and organizations to create their own lab or adapted learning spaces based on their local needs and interests. These initiatives are presented in the network of learning labs. Besides European Schoolnet, the STEM Alliance and Microsoft are also organizing a virtual event, Hacking Future Skills Computer Science Education. This evening on 25th of June at 3 p.m. You can still register to the event and the goal is to explore the state of the art for computing education in Europe and discover different approaches reforms and initiatives aiming to equip the future generation with the skills they need. The event will consist of two sessions dedicated to policymakers, practitioners and teachers. Finally, when talking about STEM education, the curriculum implementation is also crucial. For a STEM school, it is important that the school is developing a curriculum emphasizing STEM subjects or topics and STEM key competences. Besides, interdisciplinary instruction plays an important part. It corresponds to a teaching methodology aimed at giving instruction across different extracurricular disciplines, STEM subjects, including preparation within interdisciplinary teacher groups. It is also important regarding STEM teaching to connect the lessons in the classroom to real world experience. This is why we also mentioned the contextualization of teaching as a criteria under curriculum implementation. For schools to find nice examples about how to integrate STEM in the classroom, Check the massive open online open courses on the UN Academy and don't miss the two MOOCs that will start in October 26. Yeah, about integrated STEM teaching for primary schools and secondary schools. In these MOOCs, you will learn how to go from teaching isolated physics, chemistry, biology, science, technology, engineering and mathematics classes to a real integrated STEM teaching of these topics not only among themselves, but with all the other disciplines. This MOOC will examine the opportunities offered by integrated STEM teaching and will provide many practical examples that you can use in your classroom. Of course, all the criteria that I just mentioned do not operate alone, but are connected to one another. And STEM schools should have it in their plan to reevaluate their STEM strategy on a regular basis. Moreover, when referring to a STEM school, the criteria should always be considered about STEM education. When the criteria are fulfilled for all subjects and at the whole school level, it was decided that we would be referring to a leading school. All the information regarding this analysis and publication can be found on the STEM school label portal. And this report describes which are the key elements and criteria that should be taken into account when defining a STEM strategy at the school level, which would automatic, uh, ultimately uh, characterize the STEM school. And second, how the different phases in the information gathering process to select these key elements and criteria were developed. But how can a school use these criteria? These criteria provide to school stakeholders a clear framework to work on so they can build, develop a clear STEM strategy. With the STEM school label, schools evaluate themselves via an online self-assessment tool according to these criteria defining a STEM school. Via the self-assessment form, required areas of development are identified and an action plan as well as resources are provided. By progressively developing its STEM strategy, 
a school can reach different level of label. The competent label, which stands for a minimal practice of STEM school strategy. This means that the school is showing a commitment to developing a STEM school strategy with some aspects in place, but more needs to be done. The proficient label, which corresponds to a more advanced approach to a STEM school strategy. And finally, the expert label for an outstanding practice for all criteria of a STEM school strategy. A school awarded an expert STEM school will need to be actively supporting parents and also providing outreach for colleagues in other schools. If you're working in a school and you would like your school to develop its STEM strategy and get a European label, join the community and start the collaboration with other schools. Tomorrow, we will tell you the process that schools need to follow in order to get a label. However, to present you already with one of the activity we organized for schools during the project, I would like to introduce my colleague from European Schoolnet, Eleni Mezziotti, who is going to present the STEM discovery campaign and the competition for STEM school label. Eleni, you managed the activities for the 20 ambassador STEM schools of STEM school label. How did you like this? It was an amazing experience, Noel. Good morning. Uh, to begin with, thank you very much to both you and Mark for the amazing and informative presentations. Uh, it was a, an incredible learning experience for me to see the progress those schools uh, noticed between those two uh, nine months, and uh, it's been incredible. Great. Thank you, Eleni. Well, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Noel. Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome from me too. My name is Eleni Mirziotti and I was the coordinator of the 2020 STEM Discovery Campaign. I also coordinate the activities of the Ambassador STEM Schools within the project. I would like to take the opportunity to present to you the 2020 STEM Discovery Campaign and the STEM School Label Competition. The 2020 STEM Discovery Campaign is a joint international initiative organized by Scientix that invites projects, organizations, libraries, schools, universities and youth clubs across Europe and around the world to join and assume different roles as participants, partners or organized competitions. The main goal of the STEM Discovery Campaign is to showcase the magnitude of the efforts made by teachers during the academic year while using learning resources, designing and implementing activities promoting STEM with their students. In collaboration with the 2020 STEM Discovery Campaign, the STEM School Label project invited primary and secondary schools to use the STEM School Label platform as a way of developing their STEM strategy at school level and share the stories of implementation with other schools. There were three categories to choose from and participation was possible by choosing one of the three. Teachers could opt to open an account on the STEM School Label platform and submit a case study on behalf of their school. Alternatively, teachers could organize an event related to one of the STEM school level criteria and submit a school practice evidence via the platform. Lastly, schools could participate by showing their newly upgraded label achieved during the competition period. Today, we proudly welcome two winners of the STEM school level competition, the Lycée International de Valbon and the Cielo Lopselis Darzelis Parsak and Kindergarten from France and Lithuania, respectively. Let's meet them. We have with us Fatima Mujdi from the Lycée International de Valbon in France and Stephanie Lavignas from the company Thales. The Lycée International de Valbon, represented today by Fatima Mujdi, submitted in collaboration with the head of the school, Eric Petit, a very nice activity for the STEM School Label competition about the STEM School Label criterion collaboration with industry. Today, they will tell us more about how they address this criterion in the classroom. Good morning, Fatima and Stephanie. How are you? Uh, hi, Eleni. Thanks for your invitation. Many thanks to you and the floor is yours. Thanks. OK. Uh, Lycée International de Valbonne has a specialist status uh, as a science college and a language college um, with approximately 2,500 students. It prepares, it prepares students for admission um, to major scientific university uh, around the world. This preparation aims to provide students with innovative projects so that they can develop STEM skills necessary for their future careers. In this regard, 
our headmaster, Mr. Eric Petit, has promoted a goal strategy aiming at the implementation of a quality and interdisciplinary scientific education. To achieve this, we regularly train teachers and have created partnership with industry such as Thales Company in order to bring together engineers, technicians, students, and teachers. To reach this goal, we have set up an action with evaluation criteria and, prog and progress reports with regard to the requirements of the STEM school label platform. Today, we will present one of our projects that I work with my colleague Corinne Bruna, a laboratory technician in CIE. Our school is located in the commune of Valbonne in the center of a pine forest. With uh, the acceleration of global warming, forest fires in our region have increased drastically and this problem has become a major risk. So we decided to work with the famous company Thales to develop sensors to detect fa forest fires. The students work, worked with engineers from the design of the sensor to its realization. This project approach was very important for the student because it allowed them to see all the steps to be carried out, but also different STEM skills that are necessary in these careers. We set up teams, five teams, that worked on the different areas of the project communication team, social impact team, sensor power supply team, team distribution of sensors by geographical area, and sensor design team. Now, Stephanie will explain to you the objectives and progress of our project. This, this system is based of wireless sensor network architecture using low power wake up technology. The main, it main objective of this sensor are to be energy self-sufficient, to have a reliable service life superior at 10 years, so no usage cost, to be easily transportable, to be ecological, there is no battery and uh, no continuous RF emission, to have a low price and to be able to be integrated easily in other systems, such as camera or other. This system is composed of two types of sensor. A, pe a pebble, a temperature sensor, is, uh, is goal is to burn and send before burning an encrypted alert. A watchman, a RF sensor located in tree, it will receive the alert of the people and also will take humidity readings and transmit validity encrypted information via COM protocol to the dedicated center. These sensors are composed of commercial of the shelf component. The people is developed with thermoelectric generator, phase change material and RF beacon. The challenge is to keep the thermal transient long enough to send an alert. The Watchman module is developed with ultra low power RF wake up receiver. Take with low temperature gradient, ultra low energy storage, LoRa, Sigfox on other protocol. And if necessary, if the, we have not enough energy, photovoltaic cell with anti soling treatment. This challenge of, the, of this module is to be ultra efficient in energy with a minimum of loss and to success to develop a good low power RF sensor, wake up sensor. At the end, the localization is very important. We will start with a module per hectare, mesh of 100 meters, but it will depend, of course, of the area. In this case, the probability of detection will be of 40 meters. Thank you for your listening.
Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Fatima, and thanks, Stephanie. It's actually really interesting, and uh, I just had a, a, a quick question, uh, Stephanie. Did you encounter any challenge, uh, any challenges uh, when um, collaborating with the with the schools? And if yes, uh, how did you manage them? Um, in fact, uh, we uh, we have a plan to uh, to interest uh, students, so it will be um, an iterative approach. Uh, they uh, they will think uh, for the alimentation of the sensor, for example, it will be a very uh, very difficult uh, uh, very difficult thing, but they, because there is no battery, so uh, they will uh, study uh, a lot of points uh, like photovoltaic, like um, movement of the wind. So uh, they will uh, they will do they will make uh, some. Um, module, uh, model. maquette, model, model, model. model. Yeah. some model. And uh, we will develop also with us, with us a wake up sensor RF. So there is no existing technology actually, but uh, I hope we will do it together and um, have a, a, a license um, to with us to, uh, to be uh, to success, to success to, uh, to do this module. Thank you, Stephanie and, uh, and Fatima. This is actually a real and nice example of collaboration between uh, industries and schools. Thank Thanks. you. No way. Eleni, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much. Today we also have with us Laura Vazoriune and Eringo Barsaroskine from Sierra Lulopselis Derzelis Pasaka School in Lithuania. The activity they submitted during the STEM School Label Commission involved students, teachers, and parents addressed the element of instruction and the idea problem and project based learning and query based science education. With this activity, they highlighted the importance of promoting STEM education from an early age, employing their respective teaching methods, and why critical thinking and collaboration should be promoted. Good morning, Laura and Eringo. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am Laura Boyeruna from Lithuania, from Shuli, <laughs> from Shuli Kindergarten Pasaka, and today with me is a director of our kindergarten, Neringa. Hello, we're glad to be able to participate in a such great event and we have been asked several times what it is the right age to teach STEM education and is it possible to do so in kindergarten? According to the fact that our kindergarten is a thinking school, we agree that thinking process begin on the day we've been born. So we are improving our thinking skills even before we learned to speak. Uh, we believe that in early age, the most important is that children see active, creative and innovative teachers who work with them. And now I'm giving the word back to Laura and she will present our project for three, four years old kids based on STEM. It's a big honor to be here and to introduce our project Yellow, Green, Red, which was represented in STEM discovery campaign and became the winner in STEM school label category. Uh, first of all, I want to say several sentences about Lithuanian history. Before 30 years, uh, Lithuania became an uh, independent country and uh, our small country had to, uh, to do a big steps for our independence. Uh, so every spring we have um, two important dates which remind us that someday we, we are not free. These dates are 16th of February and 11th of March. These dates are celebrated in our kindergarten every year. 
kids sing songs, uh, says poems, draws the pictures for Lithuania. But this year, I and my colleagues decided to uh, celebrate in different way. We connected uh, important celebrations and STEAM education. In the spring, we prepared a twinning project, yellow, green, red, um, and asked teachers and pupils from all Lithuania to do experiments, researches with three colors, yellow, green, and red, which are in our national flag. Experimental activities uh, we are focused on cognition of colors, interpretation of uh, scientific phenomena, uh, problem solving, creation. In this project pa participated about 20 teachers from uh, 10 different schools. But the most important that uh, in this project um, uh, participated about 200 pupils. Uh, who celebrated important dates for Lithuania and done a lot of different experiments. For example, um, uh, we tried to blow up yellow, green, red balloons, not with mouth, but with soda and vinegar. Uh, we um, add the, uh, the uh, colors on the cubes of sugar and uh, try to guess what will happen, waited and made conclusions um, about these experiments. According to these experiments, um, children improved their thinking skills, researching skills, problem solving skills, and um, uh, these skills will be useful in kids' future. Uh, in the end of a project, uh, we decided to finish it with an event for, pu pu for pupils and parents. Uh, we asked parents to come to the school and we introduced the results, results of our project. Children need to make sense of the symbols. One way to create an alternative national flag is uh, through colored rice. Uh, so children and parents uh, made the candlesticks from colored rice. Uh, these candlesticks were, was like Lithuanian flag. Uh, so today I think that um, this project was very useful and very successful because uh, it helped to connect Lithuanian past and our future with STEAM education. Now I want to show several slides, but I see that it moves. So uh, you can see that uh, children uh, can vote for the best team activity in the end of a project. And it is several uh, moments from the event with pupils and parents. It's our color dries. and our wonderful candlesticks like Lithuanian flag. So dear teachers, let's do experiment, researches, engineering challenges and other STEAM activities. It helps to improve kids thinking skills, uh, problem solving skills, researching skills, creativity, mathematical skills, independent decisions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lauren Eringa. You're welcome. And thanks to both school representatives of today for their presentation and congratulations again to them for winning the STEM school label competition. Research shows that young children benefit from learning STEM subjects, which include science, technology, engineering and math, because these dis disciplines play a fundamental role in setting the foundations for future learning. Now, without further ado, I will pass the word on to Laura sanchez Llano, teacher for one of, from one of the ambassador STEM schools in Spain, who is, good tell, who is going to tell you more about why STEM is important already from primary level and how you can develop a corresponding STEM school strategy. Laura, how are you doing today? 
Hello, Noel. Good morning. Nice to hear you. Good morning. Nice to hear you too. Well, the great the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So thank you very much to the organization as well to giving this opportunity to stay with you today. Um, we are very happy to stay here and with you and sharing our STEAM school strategy in primary school. But before focus on it, I would like to share with you a little bit an approach of our stages of learning. So as you can see, we're starting by the, our people's oral and written comprehension and related with this, we can work with their oral and written expression. And the first stage, as you can see, is the resolution of problem. That's why STEM is the main important thing. And we design cross subject activities where STEM is the main thing and these activities are universal. That means that all kids are included. We don't split about the levels. We are all in class and we adapted the same activity to different levels. And that works very good for us. And how do we know? Because we have evidences. At the end of the primary school, all kids in Catalonia have to pass an exam an external exam, as uh, since we have been working in this way, our results are increasing year by year, and they are higher than the other uh, schools in the city in the same uh, social cultural context, but they are higher as well than the other than other schools that are in other cities with better social and cultural context, and they are higher as well than private schools, so we are very happy. And I have to say that since we start in the STEM uh, school level program, our STEM activities have improved, uh, have improved a lot. We have now in our mind uh, 21 criteria that Noel have uh, explained it before. And now um, I would like to share with you a little bit how we uh, achieve these strategies through using STEM activities. Um, as you can see in the slide, we started with kids are three years old and as you know, they love uh, investigating and love creating and then discovering the world. So they are very motivated with the nature, with the science and we started with them. Uh, we uh, introduced the scientific method since the beginning. For instance, it's funny because sometimes they're reading, you are reading them a, a new fairy tale or new story and they doesn't know the end and they say, don't tell me the end, please, because I would like to make a hypothesis <laughs> that were they making connections between STEM, between life, real life. And we design into level activities where grown-ups are helping small kids and grown-ups, as you know, uh, when you teach, you learn twice. So grown-ups find strategies to help young, um, small kids and small kids that have the very funniest uh, teachers in the world, so they love it. Uh, as you can guess, we have lots of collaboration between teachers, um, but not just in these act inter-level activities. We have lots of collaboration always because we design all the STEM activities together and we stay together at least two or three uh, teachers in class while we are doing these STEM activities. Um, we are a smaller school, we are just 16 uh, teachers, so it is easy for us. And these activities are with uh, the formative assessment. Uh, that means we use, of course, personalized and continuous assessment, but this formative assessment is a very important thing in our school. Um, we encourage them to solve problems, um, real problems, uh, starting for the close problems of them, for the, the class problems, we increasing for the school problems, the world problems, and as well, we encourage them to help people solving this problem. Um, they love helping people. So I would like to show you a little bit. This is an emergency bracelet that we designed because a girl of a school has a near disease and I think when she felt sick, she couldn't um, talk. So he sent a signal to the other bracelet <laughs> for the parents. It was an idea of her. And as, as you can see, we use a lot of technology. We use uh, tools, we use uh, boards and CD printers, but um, I would like to stress that we use this technology as a tool, not the point of the activity. Hmm? We uh, help us to increase these activities and create need new technology as well. 
And speaking about connections that Noel said before, I think that's the main important thing that we are um, improving since we stay in this uh, STEM school level program because we were a little bit indoor <laughs> and now we have connections with uh, too many uh, universities in Barcelona. They are interested in the way that we teach STEM and all the school teaching uh, in sta uh, stages. So and now we have as well co uh, starting connections with companies that this is most difficult for us because they have more, com more um, connections with secondary school. And we have lots of connections with community that we're very proud. We have connections with um, City Council. And when we were to Brussels in the Congress last uh, October, we discovered uh, an idea that we're talking about two scientific ambassadors from Italia. They were talking about create fab labs in cities. So we thought it would be a good idea for us, for our city, for our reality. And we talk about the city council. They were very glad to collaborate and we are collaborating, creating this fab lab. Um, in fact, we are a little bit a fab lab of school because uh, all our ex pupils can come to us, to our school, to use devices to create these, their projects. And these ex pupils are collaborating as well with uh, our pupils. So we are creating, I think, a lovely um, network. So now I'm going to. Yes. I'm going to share with you a little bit what are the benefits for children. I've been talking about, but I would like to stress some points. As you can see, and you know, uh, people love to investigate and manipulate. So you have the motivation win. And if you are motivated, you know that is the best way to learn. I think another good point is working collaborative and um, individually. You can work individual doing STEM activities in pairs, in groups, different uh, kinds of groups, changing groups. I think that there is a good point to, to understand and to work together. Uh, as I said before, it's a good way to communicate. <clears throat> With STEM, you can uh, start in, uh, speaking about something that is real for you something that you really touch it and then trespass to the abstract mind that it's more difficult for them. But I think it's a, a good point as well. Uh, another good point is uh, uh, to see the mistakes as an opportunity of learning. Uh, they are not afraid if you fail or they mistaken because they know that um, they are learning and the mistakes help them to learn. Another thing that uh, we think is important is that STEMs allow them uh, and open their eye for the for the world. This, the, the STEM gave them the, an open side of the world. What I mean, uh, as I said before, we encourage them to solve people, to uh, to solve problems, to help people, so they know that they can change the world, and they, that's very important. And the last one, especially with in our city, and perhaps related uh, this open side to the world, it could be that uh, STEM gave them a little bit of uh, widen expectations. What do I mean? Um, they can uh, solve problems, help people, but as well they can change the own reality. Most of families in our school does not have expectations about to go to the university to, to study for them. So you know that's very well related in your, your careers, your degrees of your family expectations, but they know that they can uh, change it. And they, they are coming to our school, collaborating with us, even in secondary school. So I think it's very important as well. So I would like to say, tell you that if you have any question or I can help you in everything, you can contact with me. You have our website and in, inside this website, we have a small and humble uh, English website that you can see this STEM activity of the bracelet, but a lot of them. So we will be happy to collaborate with you. And let me say, please, thank you again to the program STEM school level. Um, to Agueda, Noel, Eleni and Bjorn, not just for inviting us, uh, for to be supporting us during this month. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noel. It was really interesting. Thank you. We actually have one question from the audience. Where can I can we see what you do in this fab lab physics? Sorry. 
Can you repeat, please? Yes. So, yes, one question from the audience is where can we see what you do in this uh, Fab Lab physics that you just mentioned during your presentation? Yes, we are starting and uh, we are creating a room of this in the city and we are now in contact with some companies in order to afford the, the money to the to buy some devices and it will be an open room where all kids in the city can come there to use it um in the afternoons so we are starting the rules right now and we started on september it's not working now for the pandemic we stopped the program so and in september fortunately we can start it you can see everything in our website we will publicate and as well as the rules and the devices that we can uh, for that Thank you, Laura. We are really looking forward to see that on, on, on your website and as you just mentioned. Uh, and as we could see, uh, actually in your presentation, it was really interesting. Thank you again. Uh, well, the STEM strategy, of course, needs to be connected with the curriculum. And in this regard, let's look into innovative methodologies for integrated curriculum and ecosystems of learning with our next speaker. Anka Popovici, who is a researcher at the University of Bucharest. Anka has been involved in the STEM school label project since it starts, and she is a member of the Pedagogical Advisory Board of STEM School Label, ensuring the quality of the process we implemented. Anka, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. I'm uh, listening to all the, the previous speakers, and I think it's has, it has been a very interesting uh, discussion and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of presentations to to find new ideas and build upon them. And I think that uh, they really relate to what I want to say, but in a more uh, theoretical um, approach from a more theoretical approach. Great. Well, thank you, Anka, and the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you very much, Noel. Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, high level event on behalf of the University of Bucharest, but also uh, on behalf of a local initiative for science education. My intervention today uh, focuses on innovative methodologies for developing curriculum integration between STEM subjects. Uh, any discussion on uh, uh, integrated curriculum is a tough one. So furthermore, what exactly um, legitimate this topic on innovative methodologies, which uh, are uh, their added value in comparison to, let's say, more traditional or classical um, um, integrated approaches like uh, uh, interdisciplinary or tra transdisciplinary models. Uh, and I think that these questions are really important because uh, of the reflective process uh, engaged in uh, answering them, which actually questions centuries of uh, categorizing and organizing knowledge and the way in we passed it on to future generation. Also, it questions our academic principle of uh, what is uh, useful and what is necessary and what is obsolete uh, nowadays. So it actually uh, connects to, to the issue of how we build an unpredictable, um, an unpredictable future. I uh, chose to start with uh, the metaphor, with a well-known metaphor, which is uh, that of the six uh, blind men who tried to, who wanted to find out what uh, is the true nature of, uh, of uh, an elephant. And, uh, but however, uh, things became a little bit confusing when they touched uh, different parts of that, uh, that uh, elephant. So in light of my presentation, I argue that uh, there are two directions of argumentation. Namely, the first one is that um, it is not enough to, to understand or to see or to touch reality from uh, different uh, perspectives or different part of, uh, parts of this reality. And the second is that um, by my research, I could say that um, when discussing the integrated curriculum, we are still in the process of, uh, of touching uh, its, uh, its different uh, parts. So um, in both cases, I think that the mental model we have uh, will uh, take us uh, to different views on, uh, on things and certain ways of action. Um, OK, so um, when discussing uh, curriculum, um, the, the issue of uh, learning outcomes and the uh, contents became first hand obvious. 
And um, nowadays, the issue of learning outcomes uh, is central to policymakers and practitioners, but also it is uh, it is central to the world outside uh, the um, uh, the educational system, the world of work uh, included. So uh, we have here uh, some of the best uh, known uh, frames of learning. That is a key competencies OECD's 2030 learning framework and 21st century skills. And uh, it is important to make reference to them because they are the main benchmark for building up any curriculum framework in Europe and uh, and beyond. And we can easily see that all of these um, all of these learning outcomes are actually integrated. Although, of course, there is a discussion on how different approaches from different uh, disciplines contribute to uh, to each of them. Um, I also oh, I have already mentioned the fact that we have uh, some classical or um, uh, traditional models of curriculum inter uh, integration, which can be placed on a continuum starting from the interdisciplinarity model, uh, which was actually validated by the, the traditional uh, educational systems and going through increasing levels of uh, integration to multi pluridisciplinarity uh, to interdisciplinarity and to transdisciplinarity. Uh, each of these uh, uh, types of integration address at different levels actually the issue of integrated uh, uh, contents and uh, outcomes. So what does STEM integrated education mean starting from the point that we have two concepts uh, STEM education and uh, integrated uh, STEM integration let's say. And I think that it is important to have this uh, common perspective on what integrated STEM education means. And this is, a, let's say, a working definition uh, made up by different approaches. Uh, so uh, integrated STEM education, uh, in my perspective, is the approach to teaching the STEM content, skills and attitudes of two or more STEM domains bound by STEM practices within an authentic context for the purpose of connecting this subject to enhance student learning. I will only uh, present today I, uh, two innovative methodologies. I chose them um, and uh, I want to uh, say from uh, up front that they are not uh, intent. They don't intend to replace the old ones. They complement them, so it's a complementary approach. The first one is the backward design or understanding by design framework. Um, and the theoretical framework was developed by Wiggins and McTie in 2005. And uh, a central concept is that of alignment between the three steps uh, we can uh, see on this slide. So the first step uh, connects to the big ideas and skills, and um, it means that it is important for us to, to see, to understand what sh uh, students should now do and be. The second step is to determine the summative assessment, which will determine whether a student has accomplished the KDB. While the third step is to create the daily instructional activities and formative assessments that scaffold the summative performance task. The second innovative methodology um, is actually focused on STEM integrated curriculum and it is a, the situated STEM learning. It is a model that belongs to Todd Kelly and Geoff Knowles, while the theoretical framework uh, resides in situated cognition theory. In this case, we have four pulleys. The first one would be engineering design um, because engineering actually provides a context in which students can test their uh, developing scientific knowledge and apply it to practical uh, problems. The second one is the scientific inquiry because it prepares students to think and act like a real scientist. Uh, the third pulley is the technological literacy, and here we have uh, we should make a mention that fully understanding the T in STEM education seems somehow to escape to, to many educators uh, who fail to move beyond using the educational technology in order to increase um, STEM uh, educational experiences while forgetting that technology consists of a body of knowledge, skills and um, uh, practices. The fourth pulley would be mathematical thinking, which is necessary for evaluating design solutions and uh, it, uh, also it uh, provides connections to between what is learned in school and what is necessary in uh, uh, STEM career schools. Uh, 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 skills, sorry. Um, the rope is the community of practice because um, 
it brings together both novices and uh, experienced practitioners to uh, communicate, to communicate, to collaborate, to uh, reflect together, and actually to engage in um, uh, shared practices. So the main challenges uh, in STEM integrated approaches, uh, whether uh, traditional or let's say innovative uh, uh, methodologies, is to identify and characterize existing and potential approaches to integrated STEM education. Uh, is it the inequitable discipline representations in STEM research and learning outcomes? The review evidence of impact on student learning, especially on a long uh, time run. The effectiveness of integrated STEM education in developing students' knowledge and core content and to document the prerequisite skills, beliefs, knowledge bases and experience necessary for teachers to implement integrated instruction because we all know teachers are those who actually put in, uh, into action this integrated approach. So um, the best practices. Uh, the best practices um, like uh, we we find in uh, the top winners, let's say in Finland, in Canada, in Estonia on, or uh, Korea, just to name some of them, we can see that uh, these are the nations uh, who actually enjoy high international testing outcomes. And if we take a look at their uh, curricula, we can find that they um, they have also concentrated their curriculum on 21st century skills, but also they have a strong focus on disciplinary knowledge. So we can find um, at European level different um, different approaches uh, from um, uh, elementary school to higher level of education, from disciplinary to integrated approaches, or from integrated to disciplinary approaches. But also we can find uh, mixed approaches with integrated uh, um, models also in elementary school, but also in um, higher uh, levels of education. And we can also see that uh, um, in the countries with a strong STEM um, agenda, uh, there are in place uh, extracurricular programs uh, which uh, bring together a near school other uh, stakeholders. So which are the possible futures actually for a STEM um, integrated education? My, promi my premise is that uh, schools do not operate in a vacuum and uh, the changes in school curriculum should reflect the changes in schools, while the debate on um, the integ integrated curriculum should be about uh, also uh, how uh, schools are being part of a more a comprehensive ecosystem of learning with uh, multiple dimensions. So we should uh, talk about open education and um, uh, this ecosystem of learning, uh, which brings together uh, other stakeholders, the community close to schools or the schools close one to, to another to share their uh, ex expertise. Which is interesting is that research actually shows that the negative view on uh, science education and on scientists is not the problem anymore. So most most students also and their families don't have a clue or are not aware of where science can uh, lead and the um, brainy image of uh, scientists and um, science careers also put some young uh, people off. So uh, we should discuss about science capital, which um, refers to science related qualifications to understanding and uh, knowing uh, to what research uh, to what science is and how it works.